Hey everybody, my name is Debbie and my pottery shop is called Pitter Potter House. I have been a potter for about seven and a half years now and I am all self-taught. Um, I've come a long way since the beginning and I'm very proud of that. And today I thought that I would make a video and show you how I make these mugs. I have to treat this one gently because it hasn't been fired yet. It's just been set up, but um, I'm going to show you how I'll put these together. Um, I've went ahead and cut out some so that they'd be setting up a little bit. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a woodworking friend that made me a couple of molds, and I'll show you what these look like when I pull, pull this off um, to set my um, pieces on to kind of form up and get a little firm. To start, I figured out what diameter I wanted my half rounds to be, so um, I made me a template out of tar paper. I like the tar paper just because it's waterproof and they hold up to a lot of abuse. So I can create one template and use it numerous times. I've had this one for a very long time and it still holds up very well. So anyway, so I just cut, I'll cut my round out with that and uh, then form it on my forms. And you can see that the edges aren't perfect. I don't try to make them perfect. I'm not interested in that because we'll put them together and they'll be fine. Um, this one actually, when I take this off, you'll see that it has a slight flat on the bottom. And that is for obviously the bottom of the cup. The top here doesn't have anything. It's just a round piece of clay. So I have to have a place to put the neck. So I use a cookie cutter and I get it on top of there, kind of eyeball it in the middle. And then I just cut that out. And so then I have my round. On my rims here, and let's see, this is gonna be a little short, so I'll have to fill in. Usually, I'll cut these longer than, than needs to be. And I just have a little template that's a little bit smaller than this. Uh, but, but it cuts that out so that I have the, the edge to it. And then that centers perfectly around the mouth of the cup. Um, when I do these, I usually stamp the rims because I'm going to glaze that rim. And on this particular cup, I actually use mason stain and mix that with porcelain. Painted that on the bottom, let it set up, and then carved my pattern through it. Sometimes I will go ahead and, and just glaze the entire piece, and it just depends on what I feel like that day and what look I'm looking for. So for this one, let's go ahead and stamp it. And this is just a textured ball that I picked up at, I don't know, some home to go or store. So it doesn't have to be anything special. It's just something to give the glaze um, a surface texture to break over. Smooth up the inside. And I'll normally put these on after I put it together. And I think that we'll do that now too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them off the form. They're probably still a little bit soft, but we'll make it work. All right, so you see on this one, you see it's got a flat. And I, I had them do that just because that puts the natural base to my cup. So I don't have to worry about pressing it down and making it because this one is perfectly round. All right, so then I just put a little water. I don't do any scoring or anything because I am going to be working this together. And honestly, I've never been a big slip and score kind of person. 
I think those kind of things are really just whatever is comfortable for you. Um, I've been able to work it without that, so, and it works fine. I don't have any trouble with my seams coming apart or cracks or fissures or anything, so it works for me. So we leave it at that. So I'm just going to work that in, work that together, kind of round it up some until I can kind of get it to where it's a little sticky. And you see it's a little flat right now, but <clears throat> as I work with it, it'll get better. All right. So from here, I want the outside to obviously be blended together. And on these, my work and what I like to see in my work is more of a rustic look. Um, I like the imperfect look. I always say they are perfect imperfections. And it's just, that's just my style. That's what I like. Some people want every crook and cranny and angle and everything to be 100% just right. And that's pretty too. But for me and the way I create, I just like something different. If I had a cabin in the woods, that would be the perfect setting for me. So that tells you I like the, the woodsy, natural state of things. So as I go around, I'm just, I'm just closing in that seam and pulling the clay over and I'm going back and forth so I'm not pulling too much from one side or the other. And you're going to have some little bits on there. And that's okay too. Alright, so, so then I've got this. Alright, we're still going to do something on the inside, but right now we've got this. So I want to go ahead and I'm going to round this a little bit. And this will help firm up that seam. And it will also start giving me the height and if I had let these set up just a little bit longer um, they wouldn't have fallen so flat so I wouldn't have to work so hard at it all right so that's good enough for now so I don't think you'll be able to see in there, but yeah, you can. All right, so there's a seam on the inside. So I kind of want to make sure that that seam is not going to come apart either. And this is some little tool I got from uh, the auto place. I think it's for taking O-rings out or something like that. But it works great for this. So I go in here. And I'm just taking this flat paddle part and I am smoothing that edge. And I want to be very careful because I don't want to gouge. I'm just trying to smooth it over. I'm not trying to put any kind of big indentions in there or anything. Just want to make sure that it's blended over. And then at the end, I'll go in and I'll kind of smooth that out with a wet brush. And again, for me, with my style and it being rustic in the first place, if I have a small indentation in there and mark where this tool went across, it's not going to matter that much because when I do my glazing, my glazing on the inside is going to cover that up too. Alright, so you can see it looks a little rougher in there than it actually does in real life, but 
take brush with some water. I got a little bucket of water over there and I am just gonna smooth around and this is mainly just to get like the rough bits because once you start glazing it and once you start firing it any high spot is really going to be exaggerated and we don't want that but see it's a little bit smoother now and I also the other thing that I do someone mentioned to me a long time ago when I first started doing mugs I used to just use a clear glaze on the inside and they made the comment that with the clear glaze and at that time I was using white clay with the clear glaze that meant that I had a white interior to my cup and if somebody was drinking a lot of coffee or tea which I love coffee then eventually that could stain the inside of the cup and instead of it being white it's going to be tan or brown and look dirty all the time which made sense so ever since that day I decided that what I would do is pick out me a liner glaze and use that instead and this is a cup that's broken but it's the same style and you see that it's it's actually glazed but I dropped it and I broke the edge so now it's my wax cup but uh, but you see the inside you see that color in there it's it's a kind of a textured blue color and that's what I use now all right so this I am going to have to stretch this out some because this is not gonna be long enough I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit so I've got some length to it that should be enough and then we'll just put this around and hook it together when I'm adding my rim I go just on the top side so that the inside of this is touching the inside of my cup and then we'll fix that there later because it is short but this is for demonstration purposes so that's okay all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and push this down some to seat it work all right so then for that I'm going to go in the inside and I'm going to pull it up so I'm just pulling the inside of that rim of the, the base up over the rim of this mug the way around doing that and I can just feel where it's thin and not thin and then I'll come back in and take my little tool and make sure that I have some clay over there because we certainly don't want to hold in our rim. I guess you could do that and that could be the ultimate April Fool's cup. Alright, so in order to fix this we're going to put a little dot of clay in there because my rim was too short right here. sure all of that's fine. I'll put a little coil in here. Okay. 
All right. So it's a little whopped because it was shorter on this side, but we're gonna make that kind of work for us right now. Like I said, this is really for demonstration purposes. If I, this was actually one that I was making for myself, then um, that would have been longer. But this tells you how to get it done. And then I'll just work with it until I get it the right flared opening that I like. You wanna make sure that it's wide enough that especially for somebody like me that's got glasses that you can drink out of it without knocking your glasses out of the way or if you've got a big nose or something like that. All right, so that's basically it. As it firms up, you know, I'll go ahead and shape it up some more sometimes if it needs it. But you see the outside is pretty smooth now. And what's not smooth I like that look. I like the way it, it translates to the finished product. And then when I make my handle, my handle is really just a coil that I put some texture on. And this clay's a little stiff because it's been sitting here. roll it out and again I'm not looking for exact perfection because I like the look but I am looking for some consistent thickness all right so then I'll just take me a sharp edge and I'll go over it and I'll go over it and I'll go over it and put me some texture on there. And this actually kind of makes it look like a rope braiding. I saw another potter do this, and I really like the look because it really goes with the natural thing of things, the way I do it. So, and then for mine, it has a curl, and this is really my version of a thumb rest. So there would be my handle. And then just to make sure that I've got good adhesion to the cup, I just like to make me a couple of little dots. And this will go on both sides. And again, I don't do slipping and scoring. I'm, I just use water and it's water out of my clay bucket that I use to do everything else with, my sponges, you know, anything with clay. I don't put, it doesn't have any glaze in there, it's just clay. And then I will go ahead and attach it to my cup, which this is very damp at this point, so it's gonna have to be set up. Oh, and it may not. You just have to keep in mind where the bottom of your cup's going to sit because you don't want that. And you see I'm still forming it some to make it more round and have a smaller bottom. All right, so then after that is done, I will set it against something to make sure that handle does not fall. I don't want the, the handle to droop too much, and I want to make sure it sets up. And I'll look straight down at it and try to make sure that it's centered and it's just right. All right, well, that was my first video, first ever. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And um, I hope you'll leave me some feedback and some comments. And if there's anything that you think you might want to see me do, I'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe so that you can keep up with new videos coming out uh, as I get them done. And also be sure to share. All right. Thank you all so much for watching.